Hey guys, welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Andre Seegers, and this time we're joined by Derek Banner and Ash Paulson to discuss our current thoughts on the Nintendo Switch. So, let's get started. Alright guys, it's been one week since the Switch was fully revealed since you and I played it, Ash, and we've learned even more details about it, you know, coming out in little tidbits here and there. So I thought it'd be good for us to get together and discuss our thoughts now that we've had time to set in, you know, for everything to set in, and now that especially we've had time to rest, Ash, because we were just exhausted in those past couple of discussions. So, uh, it really, it was, it was a, it was a marathon for sure. God, right. So, <laughs> so I think we've had time to rest. This is now a good time to talk about everything, especially since we haven't talked to Derek since the initial premiere, you know, the initial presentation that night. Um, <laughs> so I just want to find out how are you guys feeling right now? Because there seems to be, I don't want to get into it too much right now, but there seems to be a lot of negativity surrounding the switch at the moment. So I wanted to know how you guys are feeling about it right now. So let's go start with with you, Derek, since we haven't heard from you in a while. Uh, how are you feeling about the Switch overall? I'm honestly feeling pretty good about it. I don't say I wouldn't say I'm like a hundred percent about it, but I'm also I like what Nintendo has set up here at a base level. When you get into the specifics, then you can really pick and nag at things. But overall, what they're doing with it, what's being shown, I have a generally positive opinion of it, and I. <clears throat> this is a very common question I've seen a lot of people ask. Um, especially for, uh, for us, and that's whether or not we'd pick up the Switch if we weren't covering it for Game Explain. so if we were just regular gamers. And I gotta say, looking at all this, yeah, absolutely. Zelda would do it, and then because Zelda would be, is enough of a big title for me that I would get it on the Switch, and that would be mean I would be ready for Splatoon 2 and especially Mario down later in the year, and that is enough to make me buy the game at launch if I was able to get one normally, which thankfully I did get a pre-order. <laughs> but now hold up, real yeah. quick, real quick. Uh, you could play Zelda on Wii U as well, though. I could, but I know myself. I, I had the option to play it on the GameCube <laughs> or the Wii, and I chose to play it on the Wii. So for I would want to play. Yeah, for Twilight Princess. Yeah, I want. I, I would want the better better experience, even if it's just minuscule. I would want the better experience because you know it's. It's the Switch. It looks great. It looks, uh, you know, I have this brand new shiny thing, and there's always something exciting about a new system in the house. Yeah. Tre checking out, trying it out, seeing what you can do with it, and I, I think that's enough for me that I would get the Switch version of Zelda. Heck, I can go ahead and say this. I pre-ordered the Master Edition My of God. Zelda, so I, I found <laughs> I was actually able to get a pre-order for that. So, yeah, I'm a little hyped for Zelda, and I would definitely... Yeah, you know, get it on Switch otherwise. If it, yeah, you know, okay, just doing it normally. Oh, well, that's good. I'm glad to hear at least one of us is positive. In fact, I'm, if we are, we're all going to be positive to some degree. I know. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. Ash, for you and me, so our experience is a little bit well. So our experience is a little bit unique in that we recorded both discussions. As I mentioned, we were exhausted, and the first one right after the presentation. That was based on what you know the the small amounts we were able to see in the presentation while we were actually covering it live. So we saw you know. We had, we, we weren't able to take in the event in the same way people watching it casually did. So right. So it's interesting because we were we were actually pretty positive, I think, following that event. But then after everything sunk in, we weren't quite as positive the following night uh, after we had hands-on time with the system as well. But also, again, we were exhausted. So I'm curious now where you sit where you sit now in general, <laughs> given that you know we've had a week now and we're fully rested. Hopefully, right. Fully well, <laughs> I know. Seriously, <laughs> well, um, I, you know, I, I want to make it clear. I've been a pretty vocal critic about the Switch on Twitter and in discussions in terms of its viability or its potential viability in the marketplace. But I want to make it crystal clear: as a Nintendo fan, I'm there day one. I have mine pre-ordered. I, I thankfully was able to find a special edition of Zelda. I couldn't get any master editions, but I was. I think I have a special edition of Zelda on pre-order. Hopefully it doesn't get canceled. Yeah. <laughs> but no, as a fan, I'm really excited about the Switch, and having had hands-on time with it, I want to make it very clear, in terms of a proof of concept and what the Switch can actually do, I think it's awesome. However, I think Nintendo really made a lot of blunders with the presentation and the price point, to be honest. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I think the price point came in a little bit higher uh, than, than what most people are expecting, and especially regarding the accessories and the controllers are so expensive, certainly more than I think any of us were expecting. And that, along with an incredibly weak launch lineup, I mean, let's be honest, there's Zelda, and then there's a very budget playing version of Bomberman. And then, you know, okay, so then you've got those two games, and then you've got the other four for people who are really excited Three, about. I think. 
Well, yeah. it's for now because of Binding of Isaac. They oh, okay. Binding of Isaac yeah. Afterbirth oh, yeah. is now officially a launch title in North America. But really, that's six games and really only one major headlining game. It's, it's not a good launch. And then you look at the next few months after that, and you've got a, a couple of major touchstone releases like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Splatoon 2, but those are that's April and then sometime in August or sometime in summer, respectively. Then we have these smaller titles kind of filling in the gaps, but not that many. And I think a lot of people are looking at this and seeing, okay, how is this so far? How is this different from the Wii U? Right. I'm not saying that it can't be, but I don't think Nintendo, Nintendo did, did a very good job uh, convincing people that the Switch's software lineup is going to be that much better than the Wii U's uh, yeah. in terms of the first party stuff. Yeah. I mean, I agree with everything you just said. I don't think they did a good job selling that it's going to have a better launch lineup than, or even a better software lineup in general compared to the Wii U, at least when it comes to third parties. Uh, in fact, I think the Wii U probably had a better launch than the Switch is going to. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Which is weird, and I think that's part of the problem. So before before I get to that, you kind of touched on something there, Ash, where there's kind of two perspectives here, right? Um, yeah. In our first presentation, I was coming purely from my own, or from our first discussion, I should say, about the presentation. I was coming from purely my own perspective, and that's a fact. What I saw were two freaking amazing games in that presentation that I want to play more than anything else, <laughs> being Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey. Beyond that, I really didn't care what else they showed. I was sold right then. I think, I said on Twitter a few days ago, I don't think I've been more excited for, two for a pair of games than I have at this moment. And that's saying something. It's been a while since I've been this excited for a game, let alone two of them. Uh, so I'm, I'm stoked in that regard. But once everything started to settle in and I started, you know, uh, starting to take, you know, starting to look outside my own mindset uh, toward the general market, that's when I started to realize Nintendo didn't quite hit out of the park here. Um, there is some pretty big gaps here, especially with a, tr with a software lineup. I mean, we were talking before we started recording, just to make sure we had all our ducks in a row. There is not anything I would consider to be a triple A game announced for the Switch. Not a single triple A game that I would personally classify as a triple A game, and I think you guys agree. That's a problem. <laughs> that's I think that's a big problem. On the other hand, Nintendo themselves makes you know they they make triple A games. I think Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey are going to be those among that's not even counting Splatoon and you know other games coming as well. So I mean that'll help. I mean you know if you like Nintendo games, that's going to be fine. If you want that third party those third party offerings, that is going to be troublesome. But at least we are getting there does seem to be some decent level of support at least when it comes to smaller titles, especially indie games. There does seem to be some good support in that in that regard, which is you know nice. But uh, I, I think one of the main issues they ran into is that they started off, basically, if I remember correctly, they started off with a price point, right? They're like, this is coming March 3rd, it's going to be $300, and at that point, everything after that point was justification for that price. And they, they didn't justify it, I think. I don't think they justified it to the larger yeah. market. They only justified it to Nintendo fans. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and the thing is, I don't think they even needed to justify it to us. Nintendo fans are hardcore going to buy no matter what. Um, although right. that is a shrinking demographic, I should specify, as we saw with the Wii U. Um, so I, I almost wonder, I mean, ideally they would have had a better presentation in general. I almost wonder if they would have been better off ending with a price point. Just because everything after that price point was was them justifying it and them just failing almost constantly. It's like, one, two, switch wasn't yeah. going to sell people on it. The lack of third-party games wasn't going to sell people on it. I don't know which was a better way to go. But I think... Based on the initial reveal of the Switch, people were expecting more. It's like, this is a Nintendo that has... They have their crap together now. They figured it out. Yeah. And they haven't. <laughs> the only thing I was going to bring up, do you not guys think all the rumors and all the leaks and all the everything else that people were talking about before the reveal of the Switch colored expectations? I mean, yeah. And, you know, in this case, well, I, I almost want to say not entirely because... When I'm thinking about my own expectations, they didn't come from the rumors yeah. or, the, or, or the speculation. They came from the fact that Nintendo's own messaging has been so on point since that initial trailer. Yeah, that initial trailer was a great. It, it was it perfectly sold the idea of what the Switch is, and then that again that bit on Jimmy Fallon where Reggie came in and for like ten minutes was like, "Here's what the Switch is, does. Here's why it's cool. Here's why you need one." I'm out, and it's like, whoa, man! Like Nintendo's really got this messaging down. Like they're really showing and, and, and really messaging to the public exactly what the Switch is, unlike the Wii U. So I think going into it, we were confident that this really was a new Nintendo. And then the presentation happened, and it's like, but wait a minute. Like, I mean, I'm going to be brutally honest here. Like, take away the fact, take away Zelda, because, you know, let's just, let's, 
technically, you can play Zelda on Wii U same day as Switch, mm -hmm. and it's not that much of a difference. So take Zelda away from the Switch's launch lineup, what do you have? Like, it's, it's a very very bad barren launch lineup. Right. I mean, Bomberman's great, but again, it's not like Konami's giving us this crazy, beautiful version of Bomberman. Like, I played it. It, it feels like a budget title that's being sold for $50. And I'm like, okay, so you take Zelda away, what do you have? Well, you have one of the worst launch lineups in Nintendo history, in my opinion, and that's not what they needed to come out with. Now, Devil's Advocate, though, having a poor launch lineup is nothing new for consoles. Um, That's true. As I recall, Xbox mm -hmm. One and PS4 even had very mediocre launches as well. And oh, yeah. I and they <laughs> didn't have a single title like Breath of the Wild. Which again right. is a little bit weird because it's a Wii U game. But the Wii U has, you know, a mini school demographic. So this will largely hopefully be appealing to new fans. If it appeals only to the Wii U demographic, Nintendo's in deeply in trouble. But this will <laughs> well, be, this will be presumably reaching a new user base that doesn't necessarily own a Wii U. Right. But here's the main problem though, is that and, and I've got I've caught a lot of heat on Twitter about this, but it's true. Like the the Switch is not competing with the PS4 and Xbox One at launch. Nintendo created this situation for themselves by choosing to release the Switch mid generation, which means they're competing with the mid generation price points and libraries of the competition, not the launch prices, not the launch libraries. But you know, you go to the store and the non fan, the layperson is going to see the Switch next to the PS4 and the Xbox One. The PS4 and the Xbox One are f around $25 to $50 cheaper, depending on where you look, and they have like 1,200% more storage space and a massive library of games. So how does Nintendo compete with that mid-generation with the Switch, is all I'm saying. I'm getting one day one, I'm excited. But I do worry about the Switch's long-term viability here. Well, you know, the difference between those initial displays of the Switch, the reveal trailer and Jimmy Fallon, they mm -hmm. emphasized the portability, and they did not do that with this presentation. It was yeah. all about... They, they were really going back to the Wii. It was like they were trying to get that Wii demographic back by the one two switch stuff and uh, showing how the Joy Cons work and all that. And it felt like they were playing to that old demographic that left with the Wii U. They're trying to get them back, and I don't think that's a viable option. You, the, the portability is really what they need to hammer on it, and they just didn't do that this time around. The the weird thing is, there's man, there's so much we can talk about here. The weird thing is <laughs> one with one two switch. Is that's kind of like an, an an odd? It's like the odd duckling here. That's a saying, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah, the odd duck it, out. It's. I mean, yeah. it's only one that they, that really seems to be targeting that Wii era demographic. But they did put a huge focus on it, seemingly at the event. Like they had that that uh, that dual cowboy standoff that seemed to go on for like five minutes when that really should have been yeah. ended down like thirty seconds. So I think, yeah, I, I think they just gave it like a disproportionate amount of attention. Uh, I especially with the fact that that game is being sold separately at fifty dollars. I don't know how. I don't know who's going to buy that. Mm. Honestly, uh, yeah, yeah, I have no idea. I mean, I think. I mean, I was very positive with my whole aspect, but again, that was that's when you start the. I will be the first to tell you that the accessory <laughs> prices for these thing for for the Switch are ridiculous. Like. I, I'm okay with $300 for the system. That's a little high, but not sure. breaking the bank high to me. I think that's still, like, you emphasize, again, the portability and the, what it can do. You can make that work. But when you look at the accessories and the Joy-Con and the Pro Controller and just everything else attached to this system, it gets so expensive. It, it's, it quickly builds up just how much you're going to spend on this thing. And that's, I think, where a lot of people are balking at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard, too, because it's not like... It's very hard to look at a piece of te technology that you don't know what's inside it and be like, that's too expensive. Like, I mean, you know, a lot of people have pointed out to me that there is more going on, for example, in the Switch Pro Controller than there was the Wii U Pro Controller. They may look the same, they may be super light, but the Switch Pro Controller has, you know, the HD rumble, it has the mm -hmm. gyroscope, so there is more technology in these Joy-Cons and Pro Controllers and whatnot than there were in the previous generation of Nintendo controllers. But mm -hmm. it still is really hard to look at a $70 price point for a controller and not balk. I mean, even the DualShock 4 is 60 or less, depending on where you look. So now, and to I be fair, though, uh, on the other side, the, the Xbox One controller, the one that you can get, like, customized to, you know, to your liking, is like 120 bucks. So... Or, or I guess the pro, the pro controller that you can like switch out the buttons, mm -hmm. that's like more than a hundred bucks. So I mean, there are controllers on other systems that are more expensive, but it just seems like a lot for a controller. Yeah, that, and and to be, and I wouldn't spend that much on, on an Xbox controller either. Yeah, yeah, yeah the price the price points are definitely 
definitely high. Um, and that's already on top of a price point that some people, it seems like some people are thinking are, is too high for the Switch itself. So do you think do you think 300 is too high for the Switch for the general market? I know it's not for us. We're all buying it. We're all we're all excited yeah. for the Switch. But do you think? I guess more specifically, do you think the reception to the Switch would be would be dramatically improved had they announced it was 250 instead of 300? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and and I think that has more to do with the timing of the Switch's release than anything. Right. I think they could have gotten away with 300 more easily if they were competing with the PS4 and Xbox One at launch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, you're you're absolutely right. 250 is a lot more attractive, and I've seen I've seen uh, some sort of graph that had like uh, Nintendo launch prices for the consoles at um, you know with inflation added in, and with inflation, the Switch is the third cheapest console they've ever released. Right. Uh, but nobody cares about inflation. Yeah, that's just a stat to make yourself feel better. Nobody cares. They're looking at the cost right now and comparing it to what it was before, and it's not... Nobody cares. Mm -hmm. You know, they they want that 250 price point because that is something that you can easily look at, see the advantages the Switch has or what the Switch is capable of, and get like, yeah, I can plunk that down. 300, that's when you start comparing it to the PS4 and Xbox One. Right, which, you know, be, again, I don't I don't envy Nintendo's position here, but they created this situation by releasing mid-generation. So it may not be quote-unquote fair to have to compare the Switch to the PS4 and Xbox One several years into their life cycles, but life isn't fair. It's just, this is reality, and that's what the Switch is competing against, whether it's fair or not. Yeah, it's 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 weird because they are in one sense they they obviously are competitors no matter you know even though Nintendo tries to downplay that you know like they they're right. always throwing out there hey we're you know we're doing our own thing but no you're I mean and they are but what doing their own thing is still based on what other people are doing <laughs> it's like right I mean I mean if if you know if you ask Nintendo if they in a, in a perfect world do we want the most sh- you know share of the console market of course they're going to say yes right so they are in competition even if they're also not. Right. So, but one thing to take into take into consideration is this isn't a typical console. I mean, on the one hand, it's you know it's definitely weaker, but on the other, it's a console that Nintendo is saying or advertising as you can take anywhere you want. You can play this anywhere you want, and arguably there is well, I mean, there is a value in that. Um, that's a value you're not going to get with the Xbox One or PS4. And honestly, right. I think that feature alone is going to make it extremely successful in Japan. Oh yes, a, and actually, that's a great point. Did you see there are pictures that came out today of people lining up in Japan already for the pre-orders? Like, and mm. it looks and it looks to be pretty. I mean, I haven't compared to the past system pre-orders, so I don't know how it stacks up. But it looks like there is an excitement right now for the Switch, at least in Japan. Yeah, because yeah. they've gone portable there. Home consoles just aren't selling as well as they used to in Japan. So making this thing have that portability element is going to make it just so much more attractive in Japan and that's going to help out. We're, you know, for uh, worldwide though, it's not that consoles are still doing quite well. Portables aren't as notice, noticed as much. So it, it's going to be interesting to see just how well Nintendo does in Japan in comparison to the rest of the world. Yeah, I, I absolutely predict that, that Nintendo is going to give Sony a run for their money in, in the Japanese space alone. Mm-hmm. I mean, as as we as you just said, Japan has gone full tilt into portables. I mean, that's part of the culture. The the gimmick of the Switch being being a portable console literally sells itself in Japan. That's not true for the rest of the world, though. You know, I, I think Nintendo has a kind of a tricky balancing act here in the rest of the world because if they call it a console, that invites comparisons to the Xbox One and PS4. But if they call it a handheld, then they're competing with their own 3DS, which seems to be continuing on with Fire Emblem Echoes and, and what what have you. So they're in kind of a rough position here, whereas in terms of how they market the Switch outside of Japan. Well, I mean, I don't think they're necessarily even competing with a 3DS. They're competing with mobile. Mobile... Well, or mobile. Get a, yeah, good yeah. point. Mobile yeah. Mobile's eroded the handheld market. I think the 3DS were to launch, or a comparative system, were to launch in this day and age... Uh, it wouldn't do nearly as well as the 3DS did, you know, when it launched in 2011. Um, so I think Nintendo's keeping the 3DS going because they have a, an install base there they can, that they can keep selling games to. Uh, but I think if Nintendo were to release a dedicated handheld only outside Japan, 
I think there's a good chance it would sell dramatically less than the 3DS did. Which is why I think they had to do the Switch. I think the Switch is a good idea in that they're yeah. trying to merge both of those markets. And in effect, also make a third one. This is a system that you can play the same games anywhere you want. That's cool. That's something we haven't quite seen before, or not to any notable degree. Um, and, you know, and hopefully, I'm sure they're hoping it takes off, obviously. I'm hoping it takes off for them <laughs> as well. Uh, the question is, is there really a market for that? And that's what we're going to find out. <laughs> um, but yeah. I do think they were kind of forced into, into that position just because I don't think they can do another dedicated handheld. I don't think there's a market for it because on a, on a worldwide basis, that market is shrinking. That's why I don't think we're going to see a Vita successor either unless they go, unless Sony goes the same route as Switch is. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I completely agree with everything you just said. And I, that's it, it kind of falls back into why I think their marketing here is a little tricky because... Right. You know, like we just we were just talking about earlier how Nintendo almost completely focused on marketing the Switch as a home console during the presentation and really didn't focus on the portability aspect at all. But it, ironically, it's that portability aspect that I think is going to sell people on it, not the console aspect. It's that it's the fact that you can play games that look am as amazing as Mario Kart 8 with you. You can take it with you and play it on this tiny slate-like mm. device. And that's amazing. Like like I said to you, Andre, before in our previous discussion, for me, in our time in New York at the hands-on event, that was the holy crap moment right. for me. Like, I'm playing Mario Kart 8 on a handheld. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I can play Mario Kart 8 on a plane with detached <laughs> controllers. That's crazy. And you can, like, if you're sharing, like, going on a plane with your wife and you're doing a long trip, you have a second controller there. All of a sudden, you yeah. both can play that same console. That there is some really smart decisions when it comes to the Switch's design. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I wish I had it when I was flying to New York for the Switch event. I actually, <laughs> I, I was talking to my teammate the entire time, who actually, she ha, actually, she hadn't even heard of Nintendo. She didn't even know what Nintendo was, <laughs> which shocked me. But I was, you know, if I had a Switch, I could have shown her right then. I'd be like, yo, we can play, we can play games together. This is what Nintendo is. This is a Switch. Yeah. I mean, it's it's it is something different. So I'm, I just really want to see how things turn out. Uh, I guess, so I guess here's a question. Based on what we know so far, taken all together, w divorcing our personal feelings on the Switch itself, because we're all obviously excited for it, how do you think it's going to fare in the marketplace? Just, you know, a taking a rough stab at it. Uh, well, <laughs> I know, it's tough. I, I, I think it's going to start slowly outside of Japan. I, I think it's going to have some legs to it, but I think it's just, it's, it's not going to do crazy numbers until we start seeing some major games for it. Because again, Zelda's available on Wii U as well. So I think it's going to do crazy in Japan. I think it's going to go do incredibly well. And I think we're going to see a lot of news stories about it selling out. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I put that in quotes because selling out's great, but it sounds like Nintendo's already having stock issues in terms of each store only getting like, what, 10 to 20, if even that. I've heard uh, 30. Switch pre-orders. 30, okay. But, I mean, it's still not that many. So I think we're going to hear about the Switch selling out, but I think that's going to be because there aren't that many to go around yet. Um, I, I, I think it's going to do okay to start, but I think it's going to do much better in Japan to start. I think it's going to have a strong start. They're, you know, obviously, they, with the, especially with the limited consoles that they have, uh, they're going to sell through that stock pretty well. But... And I think it is going to be carried for, off of Zelda because you keep talking about how everybody has a Wii U. There's not a lot of Wii U, U owners That's out there. That's a good there. point. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, this is the Switch is their easiest opportunity. It's like, well, I might as well get this new system that has all of these features and I can sure. play Zelda. For a friend who bought a Wii U for, the new, for a new Zelda game, uh, he's he's not picking up the Switch version. He's sticking with the Wii U version. But I have another friend who doesn't have a Wii U who is going to pick up the Switch because he doesn't have the old, the, the Wii U. So that's I think point. that's a major factor is that it's going to pick up Zelda fans who never bothered with the Wii U because a new Wii Zelda title never came out for the Wii U. Mm -hmm. So why do they care? Yeah, no, um, that's a great so, point. So I think it's going to have a strong start. The middle is going to be the middle of the year is going to be a little weak. There's going to be a lot of indie titles to like hold over people who have already got it: Sonic Mania, Shovel Knight, Tre Treasure Trove, um, all these others that are coming out. Uh, but I don't think it's going to pick up again in any major way until Splatoon 2 is released. That is going to be a major title. That is going to sell systems. That is going to get people playing, and then they'll have. I think a way to ride high with Splatoon all the way until Super Mario Odyssey, which I think is going to help the system out for the holiday. Because I've seen a lot of people on Twitter say, like, I'm not going to bother getting a Switch until Mario comes out. Mm -hmm. So I right. think they're going to do okay 
up until Mario Odyssey, and then with Mario Odyssey, it's going to sell gangbusters. That's my prediction. I think you right. you pretty much hit on everything I wanted to say. I, I think I think it will do well out of the gate. I think it will sell out uh, pretty much in every territory, or at least U.S. and Japan. Um, I'm not quite familiar with Europe, so I don't want to say mm -hmm. too much there. Uh, my concern is what comes after. That's my yeah. That's my biggest thing. Uh, because I think... I feel like early momentum with the system, like beyond beyond the initial launch window, is so important. I, I, it just seems that way. Like I feel like there's been very few cases where we see a system like you know kind of sputter out the gate and then build up the momentum over time. We maybe saw it with the 3DS, uh, but I think that's more the ex exception than the rule. Yeah, we saw it a little bit with PS3 and PS4 to a degree, where there's they they didn't have a lot of big games and they had to really yeah. work towards it. But again, they had share well i mean i'm not even talking games specifically i mean it seems mm -hmm. like sometimes they're just sometimes is in because you a lot of, i mean in those cases you knew a lot of games in advance right they, they announced those games coming up far in the future i think people are mm -hmm. buying the systems based on that hype alone now again i don't have the sales numbers in front of me but my my feeling is that those uh, those systems or the ps4 at least did i think it did decently at launch right and for months after I oh think. yeah oh yeah it did, definitely. It did very well at yeah. Launch. They, yeah they were I think they were also running the FU Xbox One wave exactly as well. So yeah. that's that's what I'm getting at is I my concern is Nintendo doesn't have that hype. They don't have right now, or I mean that's my that's my initial feeling. I'm, that may not be how the market reacts, but my that my concern is Nintendo doesn't have that, and that once we get past that initial launch window, they're going to run into trouble. And my concern is they won't be able to recapture that momentum, and we're going to end up in the exact same place we have with you know, uh, multiple systems before. Perhaps not to the same degree as Wii U. Well, hopefully not to the same degree as Wii U. But that's my concern. So I'm hoping that they have more announcements coming up here that will help will help build that up, especially as it pertains to third parties. I mean, the ideal situation here is that it does Game Busters out the gate. Third parties are like, hey, we should start porting games to it or start making AAA games for this. And that will help capture a broader demographic and maintain some of that hype. But I don't know. I'm... I'm I <laughs> The thing is, I was so like I was feeling really good after the initial reveal, and personally, I still uh -huh. am. I'm still excited. I played Nintendo system for Nintendo games. I'm pretty content <laughs> here. But when it comes to the larger market, that's where I'm a lot more a lot iffier now since the presentation that was early early on. Um, and I guess maybe this is a good thing, good time to touch on um, some questions here. But I actually, ask people what they wanted us to talk about uh, about the Switch in general. And one person here, it kind of ties into what we've been talking about to some degree. But uh, this comes to us from. Ruffle Mutt, and he asks, What's with all the hate and disappointment for this console from Kind of Funny, Jimquisition, among many others? And we've, this is actually something we've seen response videos to from um, from a few other big outlets like Go Nintendo, uh, among, um, but I can't remember them all. There, there have been some good response videos out there offering like counterpoints here. I, I just wanted to know if you guys have had the same sense. Have you been feeling the same? Have you been feeling the same thing these people have these people have noted, um, or rather, uh, in this case, um, Ruffle Mutt has noted? Because it's for me, I've been living in kind of like a bubble, <laughs> largely. <laughs> but I've been working. I've been so focused on the stupid Mario Odyssey analysis, which is going to be amazing, by the way. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> but I've been so focused on that darn thing. I've actually been pretty immune to most of these, uh, most of the reactions. Yeah, I've seen some of these videos from like from uh, you know Jimquisition and kind of funny. But I haven't seen much. I haven't read read any new Gap threads at all. Like I don't know really how most people are weighing in on this. Um, have you guys had like a general idea of, what, of how people are feeling about this, and what's your takeaway from that? See, I mostly focus on Twitter and like get the general feeling there, and I have seen some some negativity where people just aren't as impressed as they thought they would be or hoped to be. But again, I also those are the same people that like, well, I'll wait till Mario Odyssey comes out because right. that's the big game that caught my eye. But that's a year that's away. What I'm waiting for. That's what I'm buying the system for. But I'll, I'm going to wait until it's actually that time because one it's going to be actually available likely at that point and two i can you know play mario right away but as far as other negativity like i've seen at least jim jimquisition i did not see kind of funny and he raises fair points in my opinion it's you know i don't think he's being overly negative about it i think he's doing it in his typical way and there are some things to worry about especially his opinions on the virtual console like nintendo could have the easiest way to fill in these gaps by just releasing a ton of virtual console games for people to play on the go wherever they want and it's not going to happen mm -hmm. and yeah and the other thing he's brought up is of course the eShop and the fact that you're not going to have to pay for 
online. And a lot of people have basically pointed at Splatoon 2 as like they're ransoming Splatoon 2 so you have to pay for online so you can play that game the way it's meant to be played. Which is a fair point. But I also think that, that Splatoon is probably going to fall within that free uh, free space so people at least can get a little hooked on it. And I the big thing for me, as at least regards to the eShop, is Nintendo has a lot to prove. They have not had the best online services in the past. They have not set up something... They have not built up the trust that Sony and Xbox did. And even they got a lot of flack when they started introducing paid models. So, you know, Nintendo is not going to be immune to this, but they also don't have that idea of like we know what we're doing here so it's like oh good yeah. we're gonna be paying we're gonna be paying money for the same crap service that we've already have and hopefully nintendo approves upon that but again all we have to look to at this point is our temporarily free snes or nes game which also hints at the fact that the virtual console is going to be pathetic <laughs> it's, right. it's it's not a good sign so i can see where they're coming from but i also think there's maybe a little vitriol because they're just so tired of Nintendo pulling the same stuff over and over in their minds. But from a general feeling, I have not felt that same level of hate toward this console. But maybe you have, Ash, because because you have gone to message boards and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's always important to divorce your own thoughts from the, you know, the time you spend on NeoGAF and things like that. Yeah. I mean, definitely, I, w I was checking out some GAF threads, you know, when I had time at around the time of the announcements and things, and a, a, there were a lot of people pr feeling pretty negative, mainly about, I would say, the price points and the launch lineup. Those seem to be the main two sticking points for a lot of people who are negative on the Switch that I've seen. It's just... It's too expensive, or at least the controllers are too, or the controllers are too expensive, and it's just too expensive in general. And as you know, especially for such a terrible launch lineup, and, and those seem to be the two major sticking points. Paying for online is another big one, but that that one I, I personally have no problem with that, as long as the online improves, you know, <laughs> along with us paying for it. But yeah, you know, I mean, I think what what we're seeing here is it's it's. Every new console has something to prove. That that's nothing new. Every new console starts a little weak out of the gate with a, with a weak launch lineup. But not only does the Switch has something to prove as a new console, it also has something to prove as as the successor to the Wii U. It has to prove that Nintendo can still be relevant in the console space. And it's it's unfair to to expect the Switch to have to prove all that. But unfortunately, it does, and it has to prove all that against the backdrop of a successful PS4 and Xbox One. So. I think people are, are being a little prob I, I think they're being a little jumpy in terms of the negativity because the Switch has so much to prove. But again, I think a lot of those same people have not actually held the Switch and played the Switch like we've been lucky enough to. Yeah. And once you actually hold it in your hand and you actually play it and you disconnect the controllers and you see for yourself all the different ways in which you can play these games and you start thinking about the future like, whoa. Just imagine how I can play Mario Kart now, or play Smash now, or all these other games coming. I think that click moment, literally that click moment, <laughs> is, is when you start to think, okay, maybe $300 for a Switch, and yeah, okay, these, these controller prices are a little crazy, but the Switch truly is doing something that the other consoles can't do. I just don't think that's something that you can have a really good grasp or concept of until you've played one yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why Nintendo's really trying so hard more than ever, really, that I've ever seen, they're trying so hard to get this thing into the hands of, of players before it comes out in March. Like, they're doing this nationwide rollout where they're, you know, getting people to come out and play the Switch. They're having pe people play it at PAX South. Like, they seem to really be trying to get it into people's hands, and I think that's because once you play it, you're like, oh, wow, this is really cool. But when you hear about it, it's just kind of, well, okay, so crappy launch lineup, it's really expensive, new console, eh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I think you brought a lot of good points there. Um, it is something that's kind of hard to fully grasp until you try it for yourself, until you see, you know, how it feels and what it's like to play a game on the go and at home. And that's something we still haven't really fully experienced for ourselves. I'm still not sure how it's going to fit into my life, how, you know, I'm, I'm rather, I'm curious to see how I incorporate it into my life, just because it is different than anything we've had before. Um... So what's interesting here, though, in this case, is, like, I can see both sides of the argument. Like, I watch videos like Jim Sterling, and I'm like, yeah, I can, you know, I see where it's coming from on, in that regard. Then I watch Counterpoint videos from, like, Go Nintendo, which I, he did a great video, by the way, on that video, on uh, Jim Sterling's video. And I'm like, man, you're totally hitting it on the head here, too. Like, that makes sense. I agree with that. 
And so, I mean, it, it, so much of it depends on your perspective, right? Like, Jim Sterling has never struck me as a hardcore Nintendo fan. <laughs> um, so right. it's, it kind of makes sense that he was taking it from, you know, from a, a much different perspective than I or Kevin is at Go Nintendo. Um, at the same time, I think it's part of that and part of his whole shtick is he, you know, there is some hyperbole there. And as there is with, I think, much of the reaction in general, I think there is a lot of hyperbole. Um, don't get me wrong, I do think this launch lineup is terrible. But again, barring Zelda, that's, that looks amazing. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. I think it is for a lot of consoles. And that's something that's kind of like, is being like swept under the rug almost. Like, sure. it's, it's, it's being, it seems to be given, it's something Nintendo's taking more heat for than other companies would. Um, and maybe that's just because they're looping in other negatives as well that haven't been proven, like Nintendo charging for online. That's something that Nintendo hasn't yet proven. It's something that they should do or is worth doing. So it, it is it's tough, but I do think I do think right now there is a lot of hyperbole out there that is exaggerating uh, the negatives, which granted are negatives, but I think it is kind of blowing things out of proportion maybe a little bit. But again, I'm kind of from the perspective of a, of a Nintendo fan, where hey, Breath of the Wild and Mario, like that's <laughs> that. I mean, I will buy a console just for those two games alone. So, yeah, not even if, the question. If Nintendo holds true to what they're saying is coming out in 2017, I get to enjoy Zelda, Mario, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and Splatoon 2. Right. All in the same year. That is a good year for me. And you know, I want <laughs> yeah. you know to to be a little more positive here. Arms is coming out in spring. That's not long after the launch. We don't know exactly when yet. That game is fun. I am excited mm. for ARMS, even though the name is stupid as hell, and I hope they change it, because <laughs> God. Uh, but that that is that is another just fun new IP in the same vein, like in a similar vein as Splatoon, even if I don't think it'll be as big as Splatoon. Maybe it will. We'll see. I don't think it will be. Mm. Uh, but, you know, that's a, that's a fun game. And then before that, we also have Mario Kart as well in April. Although, mm. I do want to throw this out there. I'm, I'm going to be straight up. I think that game is amazing if you haven't played Mario Kart 8. If you have, yeah. it's disappointing. I was hoping for more from that game. Yeah, me too. If, if they had new courses, that would be an instant buy. But an improved battle mode and new characters, it's not enough for me. Yeah, having already played Mario Kart Eight. That's the thing. It's like the fact that they're charging. I think fifty dollars now is what they've come down on for Mario Kart Eight Deluxe. That's great for new owners, but they really should have had some sort of upgrade program in place, at least for digital owners. I understand they can't track physical copies as easily, or maybe at all. But at least for people who bought Mario Kart Eight digitally. Just knock off ten bucks mm-hmm. or fifteen bucks. You know, it's just I really, really am having a hard time, and I love Mario Kart Eight. I love it, but I'm really having a hard time justifying buying that game again at full price or almost full no, it's, price. No, it's sixty dollars for... by the way. I just checked. Oh, it is sixty. Sixty dollars. Okay, so then <laughs> for for full price for sixty dollars with so little new content. Yes, I know you can play it on the go, and that's really cool. But man, that just that seems like again, that's like one of those small things that are adding up that I think are kind of contributing to this negative energy around the Switch. It's just like, mm-hmm. Nintendo got the actual hardware so right based on what I played, but so many things surrounding it, they just seem like they've completely, they're just totally tone deaf. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But again, we look at the bright spots like ARMS, and I've heard a lot yeah. of people say how much snipper clips, once you play it, it just clicks with you, and there's just you can have a lot of fun with it, like for just a simple co-op game. So More like, like are, snipper clicks. Uh, <laughs> God, I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, and that's also true. And we're also we have to factor in E3. I mean, we're looking at the at the lineup, the year one lineup as we know it now. That's true. But mm. I mean, there there we know Nintendo's at least going to fill in with a few things. I mean, we've already got what we know about. But I mean, I would still say Smash is possible to come in uh, over the holiday. I mean, it might that might clash with Mario, so maybe it's going to be a next year thing. Wait, is that, but, is that a confirmation of Mario Clash? coming to the Nintendo Switch. Oh, God, I wish. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, I mean, you know, we only know what we know so far. I mean, there's still the rumor that we'll never die, Mother 3 waiting in the wings. You know, that right. might be a great hardcore thing or for the hardcore fans that they fill in on a particularly light release month. Mm-hmm. The only thing I keep going back to is that I hear us talking about this and I hear, about, I hear us talking about the games coming out for Switch and it sounds very similar to conversations we've had about the Wii U. Like, oh man, this game's coming out in, in April. All right, okay, so there may not be something coming out next month, but at least Splatoon's coming, you know, the month after that. And it's like, it's just uncomfortably similar. 
but it's way too early to say for sure. It is. I mean, consider consider this fact. What did we have to look forward to the first year of the Wii U? Granted, I'm sure there was something. I can't remember off the top of my head. But in this case, we have Zelda Breath of the Wild. We have Mario Kart D it Deluxe, if you haven't played it before. For us, that's not a huge deal. We have ARMS. We have Splatoon 2. Uh, we have Mario Odyssey. And Xenoblade Chronicles 2, assuming that doesn't get delayed. I'm still... Uh, if I had to bet, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's going to get no delayed. way. I, 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 feel, I cannot see it. I feel the exact same way. But let's, for the purpose of the discussion, let's say that it actually does make it this year. That is a it, actually let's you know let's let's say it doesn't. We'll we'll be more fair here. That's yeah. not a bad lineup from purely a per first party perspective. I'm pretty confident that's far more games that I wanted to play on the Wii U in my first year. That's I'm I'm not prepared to make that call on a whim because you might be right, but I also am trying to think back to the Wii U's first year. Although to be, I mean, that's one of the main reasons the Wii U failed out of the gate was because it had such a terrible first year in terms of software. Yeah, so it did. you are right in that the the Switch first year lineup is is probably stronger from the get go. However, a lot of those games, or at least some of those games, are Wii U ports. So. Right. Or at least you know a couple of them are, and I'm also including Smash in that in that discussion because obviously even though it's not officially confirmed, it's it's coming eventually, and that's going to be mostly a, a Wii U port that we know of. So same thing with Mario Kart, right? Same thing with eventually Mario Maker if that happens. Like a lot of the stuff that we have to look forward to in this case, they are ports if you have a Wii U. But again, most people didn't have a Wii U, so that's their angle here, and I get that. Yeah, I think. I think E3 is going to be really important for them this yeah. year. Uh, <laughs> I mean, granted, you can say that about any year's E3, but I think this year in particular, that is going to be... That that will be when the Switch will have been out for three months at that point. That is kind of where they need to set out the roadmap for the Switch. Not just for yeah. the end of the year, but even beyond right. that. Like, up to the next E3, hopefully, or around then. We need to see what's coming. That's when they can... You know, that, that's that's when they'll be running out of goodwill for the Switch's launch. That's when they need to really buckle down and be like, hey, here's why we're taking the system seriously. Here's why you should consider picking it up. Um, and mm -hmm. also just to assure people who have picked it up at that point. So E3 is going to be really interesting this year, I think. This is... And yeah. with any luck, we'll be... We'll, hopefully they'll keep up this... Uh, these directs, or at least the one direct we got. Because with the Fire Emblem direct, we got four new games out of that. Which is kind of crazy and if we can keep having some of these focus directs showing off more stuff that'd be a nice way to keep people invested in nintendo all the way up till e3 mm -hmm. yeah yeah no i completely agree yeah i doubt it'll happen to be honest but it'd be <laughs> nice yeah. yeah no no I, I i really i think i said this in our prior discussion about the switch as well um that really e3 is make or break for the switch it really yep. if, if nintendo has a crappy e3 and doesn't really come out of the gate swinging with all these cool looking switch games i don't know how the switch does long term i don't know if that's going to instill confidence in the platform as a whole over the long term but if they come out and they're like hey Here's Smash. Here's this other cool stuff. Yeah, maybe these are all. Some of these are coming in 2018. Some of these are coming in 2017. But look at this roadmap. We've got a bunch of cool games coming. Then I think the Switch could have a real shot at, at uh, making an impact. Yep, I agree. Yeah, I think again, it's too early to say anything at this point. We're only speculating and giving our best guesses. Um, E3 yeah. is going to be really. I mean, we'll launch, of course, will be important. But seeing what happens to E3 is going to be a big. Give us a good idea of what to expect for the future. Do you guys think it's more important for them at E3 to show what's coming, what's coming out leading up to more Mario Odyssey, or leading or coming out after Mario Odyssey? Like, here's Mario Odyssey. Here's what what else you can play once you buy this system for that game. Or do you want like here's reasons you should pick up the games, uh, pick up the Switch leading up to Mario Odyssey? You know that's tough. I I think at this point. I think that narrow that window was so narrow between E3 and Mario uh -huh. Odyssey. That's what a five month mm -hmm. window. I think it's more important for what's coming after. And I know that's I a, agree. that's opposite to how Nintendo usually reacts. And I don't even expect them to. I mean, I hope they go against what they normally do, but I think I think they should focus on what comes after. I agree, but at the same time, I don't think they can afford to turn a blind eye to either side. Oh no, like, like for they, sure. Oh, like, no. they definitely have to at least show some some exciting stuff coming in the short term. But I agree that they should focus mostly on the long term in this case. Mm. All right, there's plenty more to talk about when it comes to the Switch. So we're going to have to break this up into two parts. We'll have part two posted very soon. So thank you for watching, and if you like this video, be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explained. And of course, be sure to subscribe to Game Explained for more on the Switch and other things gaming. Until next time, bye.